Thank y'all for tuning in to another episode. And uh, make sure y'all go check out my book on Amazon.com. Build your character on the solid foundation. I released it in 2017. It's like a four or five star book with some good reviews. And before we get into Ezekiel today, I want to uh, play this song for you. God over everything. G-O-E. God over everything. G-O-G. God, God over everything. I keep it at the top on stop. All I know is go on need a clock. What? All right. But yeah, we about to get into it though, man. Like I said, about to get into that Ezekiel 24, verse 19. That's where we're going to start from. And it say, And the people said unto me, Will thou not tell us? What these things are to us that thou doest so? Then I answered unto them, The word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Speak unto the house of Israel. Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I will profane my sanctuary, the excellency of your strength, the desire of your eyes, and that which your soul pitieth. And your sons and your daughters, whom you have left, shall fall by the sword. And you shall do as I have done. You shall not cover your lips, nor eat the bread of men. And your tires shall be upon your heads, and your shoes upon your feet. You shall not mourn nor weep. But you shall pine away for your iniquities and mourn toward one another. Well, yeah, mourn one toward another. 
right? Thus, Ezekiel is unto you a sign according to all that he hath done shall you do. And when this is coming, you shall know that I am the Lord God. Also, thou son of man, shall it not be in the day when I take from them their strength, the joy of their glory, the desire of their eyes, and that whereupon they set their minds, their sons, and their daughters, that he that escapeth in that day shall come unto thee to cause thee to hear it with thine ears. In that day shall your mouth be opened to him which is escaped, and thou shalt speak and be no more dumb, and thou shalt be a sign unto them, and they shall know that I am the Lord. Okay? So, the backdrop on this is that they, they was given like a parable, so to speak, and it was hard to understand. So the people was like, hey, man, explain to me what's going on. And so as you can see at the bottom, it's letting you know that we're talking about the mouth being open to him, which is escaped, right? Escaped from where they say in 26 is a, that he that is escaped in that day shall come unto thee to cause thee to hear it with thine ears, right? So for the ones that already know about the ears and everything, that we know that's how you hear the word of God and all that and give you your balance and all that good stuff, all right? And they say he gonna escape. And they say in that day, shall your mouth be open to him, which is escaped, right? Explaining that the words that's going to come out your mouth or whatever, it's going to be that he that escaped, okay? You say that he, that, you know, that he that escaped in that day, okay? So that he they talking about is the one that's going to go into the mouth, right? And that's the one that's going to speak, right? Shall speak. And be no more dumb, okay? Like following the idols and stuff like that. That they were talking about in the previous chapter. And kind of hitting on at the top of this chapter. And they say, and thou shalt be a sign unto them. They, that, um, they say, and they shall know that I am the Lord, right? So it say, and thou shall be a sign. Okay? Now, who else did he say should be a sign? It say thus, Ezekiel, Ezekiel is unto you a sign. Okay? See? This is what it said before that. It said, and your tires shall be upon your heads and your shoes upon your feet. How, we, how do we have tires upon your head? Huh? Talking about the crowns, huh? And your shoes upon your feet. Are we talking about your soul? It said, you shall not mourn, nor weep, but you shall pine away for your iniquities. And you are right away, you're going to die away, right? And mourn one toward another. Thus, Ezekiel, is unto you a sign according to all that he have done, shall you do. And when this cometh, you shall know that I'm Lord, all right? And they say, also, thou son of man, it shall be in, right, you know, y'all read that other part, okay, we heard all that part already, okay, now, so let me go back a little further so y'all can see more what's going on. Let me go ahead and read down from the top so y'all can see what I'm saying about how they're going to let you know that everything they said at the top is going to be everything they said at the bottom. 
It's a pretty interesting information as well, okay? It say again, in the ninth year, in the tenth month, in the tenth day of the month, the word of the Lord came, came unto me, saying, Son of man, write thee the name of the day, even of this, of this same day. The king of Babylon set himself against Jerusalem this same day. So now, when we're talking about sitting against, anyway, let me not explain. Let me just keep reading and let, me, and let y'all catch y'all on the on understanding, all right? And utter a parable unto the rebellious house and say unto them, Thus says the Lord God, set on a pot, set it on, and also pour water into it, gather the pieces thereof into it, even. Every one, um, every good piece, the thigh and the cho and the shoulder, fill it with the choice bones. Take the choice of the flock, and burn also the bones under it, and make it boil well. And let them see the bones of it therein. Wherefore, thus saith the Lord God, Woe to the bloody city! To the pot whose scum is therein, and whose scum is not going out of it. Bring it out piece by piece, let not lot fall upon it. For her blood is in the midst of her. She is set upon uh, she is set um she set it upon the I'm oh, sorry, y'all let me start back over here seven. For her blood is in the midst of her. She set it upon the top of a rock. She poured it not upon the ground to cover it with the dust, that it may, um, that it might cause fury to come up to take vengeance. I have set it. Uh, I have set her upon my bad job. I have set her blood upon the top of the rock, that it should not be covered. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, Woe to the bloody city! I will even make the pile for fire great. All right, so it's letting you know it's like a symbolic example. You know, I've been trying to read it to how they probably said it. You know what I mean? That's why I'll be concentrating on the way I'm said it. You know what I mean? But yeah, y'all get what I'm saying. Feel me? So it's kind of letting them know it's basically symbolic, right? So now 10. Keep on wood, kindle the fire. Assume the flesh and spice it well, and let the bones be burned. Then set it empty upon the coals thereof, that the brass of it may be hot and may burn, and that the filthiness of it may be molten in it, that the scum of it may be consumed. She hath wearied herself with lies and her and her great scum went not forth out of her her scum shall be in the fire and your filthiness is lewdness because I have purged thee and thou was not purged thou shalt not be purged from thy filthiness anymore till I have Cause my fury to rest upon thee. I, the Lord, have spoken it. It shall come to, uh, come to pass, and I will do it. I will not go back, neither will I spare, neither will I repent, according to your ways, and according to your doings. Shall your judge, uh, shall they judge thee, saith the Lord God. Also, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, behold, I take away from thee the desire of thine eyes with a stroke. Yet, neither shalt thou mourn nor weep, neither shall thy fears run down, or uh, uh, shall thou, uh, thy tears run down, or bear to cry. Make no mourning for the dead. Bind 
the tire of thine head upon thee and put on your shoes upon your feet and cover not your lips and eat not the bread of men. All right. So y'all remember about reading about tire and stuff already. You understand? But how it was upon your head. It was like, make your thoughts my thoughts, my thoughts your thoughts. You understand? That's what it's saying. Okay? And, 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 you know, and tighten up your soul. Put your shoes on. Right? Be ready to do work. Be ready to walk. Do Oh, my bad. Y'all done went to election. Let me keep on going. 18. So I speak to the people in the morning and at even my wife died. And I did in the morning as I was commanded. Okay. And people said unto me, Will thou not tell us what these things are to us that thou doest so? Mm -hmm. So that's what we started from. Right there in 19. Where he goes into explaining where he just got finished saying. And for the ones that, are, that already get it, we already know what the man is saying. For the ones that already get it, we already know what it means by ties on the head and soul on and shoes on the feet, representing the soul. You understand? We already know what it means when it say at even, my wife died. At even. Okay? When everything better stop. You know, when I when he got his mind right, so to speak. Can I preach to y'all? When the man got his mind right, that's when everything evened out. And his wife died. The false god. The invisible one. The invisible wife. Not, no, not, well, to them, it was real. Because they follow like Hathor and all these gods and everything like that. And yeah. Whether it's wrong or right, who knows? But the thing about it is when you put an image on it, kind of messing up, man. But anyway, I don't want to get too lost into that. But y'all see the transition, where we started from, where we ended up at, and where we back at again, right? So, it says, so I speak unto the people in the morning and at the evening. And, and, and at the evening, my wife died. And I did in the morning as I was commanded. So all this stuff that, he, that was ran down at the top is what he was told to do. And when he was talking about the scum and everything like that, he's talking about purging yourself from all the filthiness. See what I'm saying? Like, boil yourself. Get that, get that fire in you. Mm-hmm. And you know, when you do work, when you move and stuff like that, it generates heat. So if you just go and match everything up, man, it lets you know what it's really talking about. And it really gets deep. So at one point, see how it started off, right? I was like, it's like really putting somebody in the pot, talking about bloody city and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Talking about killing the children and... And, you know, you know, now people can take that out, out, of, cont uh, out of context. You know what I'm saying? Because we see it with just a vision, right? And then a man asked him in 19, hey, tell us what this vision means. And, say, and then he answered, the word of the Lord came unto me saying, speaking to the house of Israel, thus says the Lord God, behold, I will profane my sanctuary, the excellency of your strength. Right? The desire of your eyes and that which your soul pity. So it's like it's going it's to come down on the sanctuary. Let them know, hey man, what y'all are doing ain't right. It's like you got too much pride in yourself. You forgot where you got your strength from. You, you, you chasing every desire of your eyes. You understand? And that with your soul pity. 
All right, and your son, you know, with your sons and your daughter, your daughters. Talking about all the idols and stuff. You read uh, the verse before, the chapter before. It's talking about all the idols and all that. All right, and it's you no, know, and it say, uh, it say the daughter, your sons and your daughters, whom you have left, shall fall by the sword. We know we're talking about the word of God, but the ones that don't know your crown. When he said, uh, uh, "Bring your tires to me," and all that. And you shall do so. And they say, and you shall do as I have done. You shall not cover your lips. You understand? Saying you're going to be able to speak. Nor eat the bread of men. Like go for all the doctrine of men and all that. Like what I'm hitting, what I'm kicking to you, I'm breaking you out of the regular way of looking at things. Trying to bring you out of the doctrine of men and let you know what it's actually saying in between the lines. So that you can have that relationship with that self of you. All right. Anyway. And your tires shall be upon your heads. And your shoes upon your feet. You shall not mourn nor weep. You hear that rhyme? <laughs> and your tires shall be upon your head. And your shoes shall be upon your feet. You shall not mourn nor weep. That's a slogan there. But you shall pine away for your iniquities and mourn one toward another. Now, you remember when at the beginning of it, it was saying Babylon against, uh, I think it was Jerusalem. Yeah. Going against each other. That's what it's referencing to right here. When it's saying, and mourn one toward another. Okay. Having pity for one another, the sons and their daughters. Okay? Gotta follow the code. Thus, Ezekiel is unto you a sign, meaning like a symbol, an example, something that means something else. According to all that he have done, shall you do. And when this cometh, okay, with what cometh? Word of God, huh? The connection, the source. You shall know that I am the Lord. When? When you get your tires spinning in your head. Also, thou son of man, shall it not be in the day when I take thee from their strength, the joy of their glory, the desire. Of their eyes. It say also, thou son of man, shall it not be, right? It's a question. In the day when I take from them their strength, the joy of their glory, the desire of the eye, their eyes, and that whereupon they set their minds, their sons, and their daughters, that he that escapeth in that day shall come unto thee to cause thee to hear it with thine ears. And that day shall your mouth be open to him, which is escaped. And thou shalt speak and be no more dumb. And thou shalt, shalt be a sign unto them. Okay? So we can't be talking about Ezekiel, right? Ezekiel, right? Let me talk a third part of it. And they shall know that I am the Lord. Right? It says, Thou shalt be a sign. But look what it says, people by Ezekiel. Thus, Ezekiel is unto you a sign according to all that he hath done. Shall you do? That's third party. And with this cometh, you understand? So it's talking about the word, man. When we're talking about Ezekiel. Same thing will relate Jesus to and all that. But I don't want to go too far into that. 
you know? But um, yeah, man. 